What's up, everyone? DevTool here. As you all know, Go123 introduced the atrocity that is Go Iterators, leaving us all wondering what the Go team was smoking before this was released. To those of us that work with Go, they seem like overly complex abstractions to solve already simple problems, which contradicts the Go philosophy of keeping code simple and readable at the expense of verbosity. Even long after these were introduced, I continued to find myself wondering what the f am I supposed to use these for? Iterating over a string backwards seems lame. But then I had the thought, what if we use this for reading from a gRPC server-side stream? I've got a single RPC called git locations on the location service that returns a stream of git locations response. And the git locations response contains a location data point containing these three attributes. Over in my gRPC handler implementation, I've got the single endpoint implemented. And all I'm doing is creating a ticker that will run every one second and send some spoofed dummy location data. So I'm just sending some random floats for latitude and longitude and uh, the current Unix timestamp. And I'm sending that through the response here. Let's go ahead and run the server. We can see it's listening on port 5000. And I've got a simple gRPC client over here that reads the streamed data from the server side stream. The code that is specific to note here is this for loop, which is actually responsible for continuously reading from the stream until we get an IO EOF error or some other error. So let's go ahead and run the client to see how this behaves. As you can see, every second we're getting a new spoofed location point. On the server, we can also see that it's logging the location point that it's sending. That's cool and all, but what does it have to do with the iterators that just came out? Well, what we can actually do is create our own version of an iterator. What we can do is accept the server streaming client using generics. We can specify the type of the response that we're expecting. And if we return this iter sequence two, this allows us to return a sequence that has two different parameters in the range loop. So that's what this is doing here. And what I wanna do is be able to return an error with this, since it's entirely possible that an error can occur when we're streaming from the server side or streaming at all. So I basically moved this client side loop into an iterator here. And what we're doing is simply calling this yield function and passing in the response and the error to the yield function. And this itself will create an iterator that will do the streaming for us. So let's go back to our client example and let's see what happens if we try using the stream. Our type is location service proto dot get locations response. And then what we're gonna do is pass in this stream right here. Forgot the range. Okay, so of course what we need to do is handle our error but we can also just go ahead and print out our response.location object, just like we were doing up here. And now we can rerun this. And we can see that it's doing the same streaming for us. The benefit is that we can just write this in a range function like usual. So this doesn't really save us a ton of code. It doesn't really simplify it all that much. I could see this being useful for more complex streaming or data transfer types of situations. I could especially see this being useful if we needed to stream from this server in a bunch of different places and we didn't want to rewrite this type of logic every single place. It does seem a lot easier to just iterate over a range function like this. So that's a situation where I could see this being sort of useful as if we need to do this type of complex uh, logic in multiple places. That's all I had for this video. Tell me what you guys think about Go iterators. Do you like them? Do you think they're gonna be useful? Do you think that this is a good way to leverage them? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and consider subscribing if you're into this kind of content. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.